Hi, I'm Jen and this is Adam and we're with Pepper Hero Farm. Today we're going to be flipping out one of our raised beds into fall bulbs. We're going to be planting some fritillaria, but we first need to clean out everything in the bed and get it prepped for our new bulbs that need to go in. So this bed we have that we're gonna clean out was one of our dahlia breeding beds. Uh, a lot of them bloomed that we didn't like. They were just kind of singles, so we pulled them out. So that's why it's pretty <laughs> bare. So what you see here is some of the few that we've kept. Well, there's a few that still need to go, but I have a couple that I have specially tagged. I'm going to dig those up, save them off to the side, uh, but there's only like one or two that we're actually going to take and mm -hmm. save the tubers on. So you'll see us dig those up. You'll see us pull some and toss them to the side for composting. Uh, don't be alarmed. Some of them will go into the compost just because we don't have a use for them here. But we, our main purpose of getting this bed ready is that we want to get our fritillaria bul bulbs in the ground. First things first, we got to clean this bed up. Okay. If you do start dahlias from seed, they do produce tubers. So we have some beautiful tuber action going on here. We laid a foundation of wood chips on the bottom of these beds when we first, when Adam first built them. That's how we got them set up to uh, place the compost on top of them, right? Mm -hmm. Or excuse me, the topsoil. Yep, so <laughs> these are 12 inch beds. So we laid about six inches of our wood mulch that we collect, collect from a local tree service dude. Yep. Um, and then we put about six inches of soil on top of that. And you can see from the bed, it's actually sank quite a bit when we initially built these beds it was to the top yeah it's nice and moist in there and as i got down to where the wood chips should be the wood chips were already disintegrating and turning into really nice organic matter uh, for the soil mm -hmm. it's really it's workable it's incredible so we don't have to really spend a lot of time digging or doing anything and i think a huge part of that was because we top dressed our beds with that straw layer the straw mulch really helped hold in a lot of the moisture mm -hmm. and really is making the soil very easy to work with now we're ready to put our fritillaria bulbs in place and we already know that for our fritillaria bulbs they need to be about eight to ten inches apart and how how deep we're gonna go about six to seven inches deep with the fritillaria the soil level has dropped down a little bit so we're only going to go about halfway down on the board if we're just kind of using the board as a visual and then after we get these placed where we want to we're going to come back in and top dress the whole bed and more mulch the eight to ten inch plant spacing is recommended for your typical garden now we are a production farm so we're always pushing the limits on what we do so we're probably going to plant ours just a little bit tighter we want to force our blooms to get taller and not give them a lot of space to get bushy yeah and that is what we have found the tighter you plant a lot of things it's like they really work hard to compete and just end up growing taller crowd those plants Now that we have our bulbs set in place, we're going to go ahead and push them down into the dirt and get them planted. So Adam's gonna go grab one of our handy dandy little bulb planters and we're gonna get these planted down into the ground. These are a couple of tools that Jen and I like to use. Uh, this is like a, a really cool little long trowel and uh, another is a pickaxe. These are This is really great for digging up deep roots like dandelions and this one's really great for as a general weeding tool. I was going to say burdock too is another good one that yeah. it really gets down and, and gets them pulled up out of the ground necessary. 
you notice that we have a little bit of a gap in our bed and we actually have a few more fritillaria bulbs coming that we can use to fill this in. Um, but for right now, we're gonna get what mm -hmm. we've done planted. With fritillaria, uh, we did place these into the ground with uh, the top pointing up and the root system pointing down. You will have to plant your bulbs this way and we'll show a quick example of the top of a fritillaria bulb versus the bottom of a bulb. You wanna make sure that the roots are facing the bottom. The other thing we'll end up doing in early spring with, it, with these fritillaria is we will end up having to put a little corral around them. Fritillaria get very tall, so we're going to end up staking each corner with a little pole and we're going to corral them with a couple pieces of string to make sure they don't tip out and go over the sides of our little box that we have here, mm -hmm. right? And we'll show you more about that when we have them actually coming up and starting to bloom in spring where we have them corralled. But you will have to do that because they get so tall, tall and top heavy, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so we're gonna get started with planting our fritillaria into our little raised beds here. And like we mentioned before, it's only gonna go a couple inches into the ground because the mulch that we're gonna put on the top will make up the difference to give us our six, seven inches that we're looking for. Yep, exactly. Let's get started. I want the pickaxe. I changed my mind. Give it to me. <laughs> oh no, you keep your bulb trail. <laughs> it's hard to use. <laughs> no, this is my weed, my weed tool. Yeah, it's really great for weed. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know what it is. Adam always tries to race me when we do these things, and he did it again. He's like, I'm going to beat you. She was racing too. She's just saying she wasn't racing because she came in last. It's called a sneak attack. <laughs> so now we're going to come in with the tractor and drop uh, probably just, I think it might only take one dump, possibly two, a we'll couple see. of dumps of mulch to get these topped over and we'll be good to go. Probably two. That's what I think. think. Too? Oh, yeah, okay. I want to make sure they're extra warm, like yes. I said, for winter. Yeah, and that's, it's going to break down really, really fast and shrink. So even if it's overflowed a little bit, it's okay. The type of fritillaria that we're growing here is crown imperial. It's a big fritillaria. There are different kinds of fritillaria bulbs that you can buy. This is the big one. There are other kind, like voluptus. I don't know. I don't know anything about fritillaria. <laughs> area. I'm there's, just following the boss's instructions. <laughs> there's different there's different varieties that you can get that you can purchase. This is the big one. Uh, sources where you can get these are Eden Brothers or Brex. You can find them anywhere. They're easy to get a hold of for the home gardener. Just Google it. It'll pop up some search results for you, and that's where you can source your bulbs. The variety of fritillaria that we're growing here is fritillaria persica. It's a large, you can see how large that bulb was, incredibly large. It produces these gorgeous chocolatey brown, purple blooms that I cannot wait to design with and use in spring. They're absolutely gorgeous and look totally beautiful, especially with like a quicksand rose for from a design perspective. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have here. That's what we're growing. If you're interested in growing those, you can Google it and look it up online and find bulbs online for sale. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to go get some mulch so we can get these covered up. Okay, y'all, we got our first dump of mulch on. I'm gonna go ahead and smooth this out. Jen actually had to run up to pick up our daughter from school. It's uh, pickup time right now. Uh, so I'm gonna get this smooth and we'll see where we're at when she gets back. We're, I'm not sure if we need two scoops or not. We'll find out. I think we probably will need two scoops. Like I said, we want it heavy. So I'll get this smoothed out. And we'll probably come back and bring another one in.
I'll go get one more little scoop to put on the end. I know we know we still have to plant a little bit more fritillary here. It's fine. Uh, it, it'll be here in the next few days and we can just pull the mulch back and just plant that little spot real quick. All right, y'all, last load, let's get it raked on. Look who got back just in time to not have to rake any mulch. Hey, I had to go pick up the kids from school. <laughs> I know. As you can see, I put a pretty decent sized second mulch in, spread it all across the whole thing, and it's barely kind of topped over at all. So that worked out to be two scoops, worked out to be pretty, pretty great amount. That's how we plant our fall bulbs for spring. Uh, we don't plant everything in our raised beds here, only special varieties, and fritillaria is definitely one of those special varieties that we grow here on the farm. If you all enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit that like button, and we'll see you next time. As always, thanks for joining, and happy growing.